we did our second actual identity right there. So your quiz slash midterm problem slash final problem will be, there'll be an identity on, I think, both at least your first midterm and your final. So, and also a quiz. There may even be an identity problem on midterm two. So identities will come up again and again, and is the best time to practice your algebra. Other than that, we do a whole lot of geometry overall. So this is our algebra practice here. So we just did this identity. Let's go on to another one. The instructions can be, there's many different ways to write this. You could say show or prove. So this one will just write show that sine divided by one plus sine theta divided by one plus cos theta plus one plus cos theta divided by sine theta equals two cosecant theta. Which side is complicated, left or right? Left. So that means we're going to put the easy side away. We're not going to touch it. And we're going to work just on the left side. All right, strategies are in our notes somewhere right there. All right, so we need to think about our strategies. We began on the complicated side. All right, so right in terms of sines and cosines, can I do that on the right side, on the uh, left side? It's already sines and cosines. Could I do that on the right side? Yeah. yeah. But I told you only work on one side at a time. So if you want, I'll do this in blue pen. What is cosecant in terms of sines and cosines? One over sine. One over sine. So this will be. 2 over sine theta. Now I know I said only work on the left side. So that's why I put this in blue. So we're, we're going to make it look like we only worked on the left side. And at the very end I can come back and erase this if I want to act like I never actually worked on the right side. All right, so we're going to go on the left side now where we should be working. All right, can I factor? Not really any factoring. How about multiply by conjugate over conjugate? I could. What conjugate do you see? Or what term has a nice conjugate? One minus cos theta. So our one plus cos theta, or conjugate would be one minus cos theta. So that would be one option. Uh, the problem is if I do that over here, let's say, uh, I still don't get common denominator. So I still have some work to do. So let's go ahead. There's not always one right, there's lots of ways to prove an identity. So the reason I go through the different strategies is to talk about why which one of them is good, why one of them might not be so good. So I could go conjugate over conjugate here, uh, but instead, let's go and add fractions, and that's a good idea because over on the right side, I see one single term. I don't see two things added together. So at some point, I need to turn two terms added together into one term. So let's go ahead and add them right away. So we got no common denominators. So if I show all these steps, common denominator, I need another sine data on the left term. So go ahead and get common denominator and add these two together and cancel anything that you uh, possibly can.
So what did I do wrong? So they're not conjugates. So what terms did I not multiply correctly? So these two, 1 plus cos theta times 1 plus cos theta. So I did the first last. I didn't go outside inside. So there should be another plus, plus cos plus cos, which will be plus 2 <coughs> cos theta. Is that right? Cos, cos, yeah. So that's the foil version right there. So we got first term squared, last term squared, and then the outside, inside are the same. So there's two of those. What next? What can I simplify using some trigonometry? All right, sine squared, what does that pair up with? What do these add to, sine squared plus cos squared? So that adds up to 1 right there. So you don't want to cross them out. That would act like they canceled out to be 0. So I'm just going to circle them, and then I'm going to write on the next line an extra 1 down there, just so I know those two turn into that 1 right there. I'm going to add them together. So again, if you cross them out, it looks like they should be canceling to 0. So you don't really want to cross them out. Well, 1 plus 1 is 2, and we can factor the 2 out. So I skipped a small step there. So why is this really nice, this last fraction? Yep, 1 plus cos, 1 plus cos cancels out. And this is a good time to cross them out. So they cancel out to 1, but it's a multiplication 1. Now at this point, this is exactly what I wrote above 2 over sine theta, which is 2 cosecant theta. So now we'll act like we never did that on the right side. Just take your eraser and get that out of there. So that's gone. So I don't care if, uh oh, too far. I don't care if I see this on your page right here. What I would do to save time is just cross that out over there. I don't care if I see your scratch work. That's totally OK. Uh, but, but what I do want to see is your final answer in the right order. So what I don't want to do is read your answer that goes down here and then all of a sudden sort of loops back up. So I want your answer to just go down. So if it does loop back up here, just take all this stuff and turn it, put it in the opposite order down below. So that's all you need to do. And you don't have to spend time erasing, just cross it out. And just like uh, if you write your English paper, do you always start with the very first sentence every paper you write, and you write the first sentence and the second sentence and the third sentence? Sometimes. But a lot of times you write down random thoughts for different paragraphs, and then you build it up from there. But usually, I mean, unless they want to see your first draft or your outline, you don't usually turn that stuff in. So you can write some other things down. All your scratch work, uh, I think one time, what did I do? Sine. I use the sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 here. So you could write the identity over here on the right side that I used right here when I put circles down. So you feel free to write scratch work over there on the right side. When I grade your identity, I give you points based on how many correct steps you did. So if you make a really bad error very early, a lot of times I will take more points off for that unless I see some very, uh, some correct steps after that. But a lot of times, if you make a mistake early, 
uh, I'd take off more points for that versus if you made, maybe you didn't uh, cancel things out correctly down here. So let's talk about some bad algebra for a few minutes. Or I should say wrong algebra. So we are in the red pen, so this is all going to be bad stuff here. All right, you cannot split up a frac or cancel a fraction like this. So that is not allowed. When would the a's cancel out? What would have to be different with this fraction for the a's to cancel? Multiply. multiply. So that's multiplication, no problem. So I'll put the right stuff in black. So what you may have been thinking if you did this was if it's a multiplication, you get b. So you can cancel like that. Uh, there is something I can do to a plus b over a, <coughs> and that something is split the fraction into two fractions. So I can take my numerator and break it up into two fractions. Of course, a over a is 1, so that will reduce down to 1 plus b over a. So you can do certain things to fractions like this. Now, and the general one will be a plus b over c, a over c plus b over c. So these should all be review right here. Uh, so that is correct. What is a wrong version that I see some people do is this one. So you cannot split a fraction with addition in the denominator. So don't do this. Uh, some more bad cancellation. You don't get to cancel the a's like this with addition. So fractions are basically division. So what's the operation that corresponds to division? The opposite operation is multiplication. It's not addition. So multiplication and fractions work really well. Addition and fractions, not so well. That's where you got to be a lot more careful. With addition and fractions, pretty much the only thing you can do is a uh, common denominator, which is uh, this one right here. That's about all you can do if there's addition in your fraction. So that should take care of most of the wrong, hopefully, stuff that I'll see. So now we'll do a tangent, cotangent identity. Tangent t plus cotangent t divided by secant t cosecant t equals 1. So obviously, the complicated side is the left, so we'll put 1 away. I don't really know any moves on 1 to do, other than maybe sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. That's about the only thought rattling around in my brain right now. Uh, if there's a tangent squared plus 1 to secant squared, I can solve that for 1 also. So there might be a secant squared minus tangent squared equals 1. But either way, there's, I don't know which of those to use, so we're going to leave 1 alone. All right, we're going to work on the left. Can I factor on the left side? I think, yeah, if we turn all the sines and cosines, I think it would be a very good move to make. So we'll be doing that very soon. Uh, but before we do that, this is the way your brain should be thinking. This is a plus b divided by c times d. So this is basically how your brain should be parsing up this algebra. We got a sum in the numerator and a product in the denominator. So I can't, 
The only thing I could really do is split this into A over CD plus B over CD, but I don't think that's going to help us very much. And I know on the right side, I want one thing. I don't want one plus cosine or something like that. There's just one term on the right. So I don't want to break it into two fractions. So let's write in terms of sines and cosines. There is one other strategy that would potentially be useful. What is the only other thing, strategy that I could use? There's no factoring. We're already on the complicated side. I think there's only one other strategy that I wrote down that's applicable. Process of elimination. Look at your strategies. Which one do we not use? Conjugates. Is there a potential conjugate? There is definitely one. What is that conjugate I could multiply by? Tangent minus cotangent. The only bad thing is I'll have tangent squares and cotangent squares. And the identity that I know about relates tangent squared and secant squared, not tangent and cotangent. So going to tangent squares, cotangent squares, I don't think will be a good move. I don't have a good identity for that. So we're going to use the sines of cosines. So tangent, sine t over cos t plus cotangent is reciprocal, cos t over sine t divided by secant. 1 over cos t cosecant 1 over sine t. So we have a fraction of fractions. What is a good move to make? Fraction. Reciprocal of the denominator. Can we get reciprocal of the denominator in this form pretty easily? Yep, just reciprocate both of those fractions, and it will be really nice. So here's our denominator. We're going to take the reciprocal, and the good news is it's multiplied. If it was addition, we'd have to add them with common denominator. So this is a product, so I can just take the reciprocal. So there's our numerator, our denominator. You could really just write it as cos t times sine t. You could put them over 1, but that's not super necessary. So we're going to take this fraction and distribute. So the actual algebra, you always want to think about what's really happening. This is all that's going on. a plus b multiplied by c. Nothing more complicated except A, B, and C are more complicated. But other than that, those are the algebraic way your brain should be breaking this down. So we have cosine times uh, sine over cos. Or I should say cosine times this cosine will cancel a denominator. Cosine, so we have sine squared t. And in the second fraction, our sines cancel. And we have cosine squared t. And of course, sine squared plus cos squared, that'll be 1, which is what we originally wanted. So any algebra questions getting down to there? So why do we start on the complicated side? Let's say we start on the easy side, 1. So we started here at the bottom. Unless you have lots of experience, it wouldn't necessarily be obvious to write as sine squared plus cos squared. I sort of guessed that was one of the two options to use at the beginning. So maybe you can get this step right here. Is the next step obvious? That's very not obvious. And then from there, then you would have to re rewrite it as a multi-story fraction, and then flip it all back to 
secants, tangents, cotangents, cosecants. So that's why we go on the complicated side and make it less bad. It's very difficult to go the other way. You can do it as a personal challenge uh, if you really want to, but I don't recommend uh, doing that overall. It's not a good move. So if there's a simple side, you definitely start on the other one. So we have only one more basic identity before we jump into 10.4. So we're going to verify 2 cos squared theta minus 1 whole quantity squared divided by cos to the fourth minus sine to the fourth. equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So this is a case where you maybe could start on the right side, but definitely the left side is more complicated. So we're going to start on the left. So let's put the right side in a box. We're not going to mess with that. We got a lot of work to do on the left. So I could FOIL the numerator. I could square it. But let's instead do some factoring. How do we factor difference of uh, fourth? How do I say that? Not cubes. Difference of fourth powers. A to the fourth minus B to the fourth. I'm going to write this as A squared squared minus B squared squared. This works not because 2 plus 2 is 4, but because 2 times 2 is 4. Powers of powers of products, not sums. How do I factor, or how, what do I do with a squared squared minus b squared squared? How do I factor that? Factors into what times what else? So we got a squared minus b squared. What is the other factor? What's conjugate of a squared minus b squared? a squared plus b squared. So I just factored. I did a conjugate factoring right there. So it's thing squared minus other thing squared. Can I keep factoring here? And if so, what term can be factored some more? So a squared minus b squared is a regular conjugate. That's just a minus b, a plus b, right there. So I can factor that out. So that is our full factoring. Now if you use complex numbers, you can actually factor a squared minus b squared into a minus bi, a plus bi, but we're not going to do that. We're going to mostly, until we go to complex numbers, very briefly, we're going to keep everything real for a long time. So we don't need to worry about that. So let's use this factoring in the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump straight to the bottom where A is cosine, B is sine. So we're going to get it all fully factored out. So at top, we're just going to copy that. 2 cos squared of theta minus 1 squared. Denominator is going to be pretty big. So we're going to have cos theta minus sine theta, cos theta plus sine theta times cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. What trig identity can I use here? The last one's just a one. Last one's a one. So what I'm going to do is cancel it out, cross it out. The reason I'm crossing it out is not because it's 0, but because it's 1. And when I multiply by 1, that doesn't change anything. So crossing out doesn't mean it cancels to 0. It just means, in this case, we're multiplying. So it's multiplying by 1. So that won't uh, 
that won't affect the denominator. So I can basically just erase that term. Now we still have some work to do. Might be better to actually unfactor or to multiply them back together. So if I foil these back together, we have cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. <clears throat> so looking on the right side, we have 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So this is our goal. So what I don't see is any cosines. How do I turn cos squared theta into just uh, sines? So I want to get rid of that cos squared theta. So I use the fact that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So cos squared is 1 minus sine squared theta. So that's how we can turn cos squareds into just sine squareds. We have to do it carefully because there is a uh, 2. So we have 2 times 1 minus sine squared theta minus 1 squared. So I took out cos squared and put 1 minus sine squared. Now I have to distribute the 2. So we're going to have 2 minus 1, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta squared. So we're almost there. So here is where you could cheat. So we're super close to what we want. So I know this is, these are equal. So just looking at this, so I'll cheat with the blue pen. So that denominator better reduce the power by one, or else we won't get to our goal. So if this is your quiz or your midterm, I wouldn't know that you just cross things out without knowing why. So we can just do that? Yeah, I mean, you can go on the first step and just say, uh, and just write the answer, you know, right down here instead. But uh, I probably won't believe that you know all the steps to go between those two. So I don't know what you don't know unless you show me. So you know that it should cancel out to what we have in the upper right corner. And you know that it, I see the term right here. So it better be one of the, the square, one power of this, right here better cancel out with the denominator. So let's say that you're not OK with cheating. So let's do this the proper way. Let's actually determine why does this cancel out. So it will cancel out, but the question is why. So you probably do this type of thing on your English essay or history essay all the time. You don't really know what you're talking about, so you just start writing words down and put dates in there and hope that they're right. Uh, but let's actually figure out uh, why these are equal. All right, so I want to, I do want to cancel a power with that one. That's what's going to happen. But things are not quite in the right form. Uh-oh. That's not good. All right, things are not quite in the right form. So let's look. What is in the denominator that makes it different from the numerator? So we've got a sine squared, but i got a cos squared also. So what I want to do is take cos squared, take it out, and put sine squareds in its place. 
So how do we do that? Very carefully, we can write our cos squared plus sine squared. In fact, oh, I got it right up here. So we're going to use this guy right there. So where I see cos squared, I'm going to put 1 minus sine squared in its place. So I'll do that right now. So I'm just going to copy the denominator. So where you see cos squared, write 1 minus sine squared. So now we've got 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And now, when you cross out the denominator and one power, you can feel confident that it's obvious at this point. So questions on this identity. So again, if, if I don't see any of these steps in here, I won't necessarily take off points jumping from that step to the last one. Depending on how many steps you have missing, if you have a lot of steps, maybe all you did was factor up here and I didn't see any of this work in between here. That I would not give so many points for. I'll give you some factoring points at the top, but not going to give you any points for using all the trig identities. So if you skip too much, I'm going to know that you're full of it. So what I recommend is basically show as many steps as you pretty much can within reason. Usually the minimum is, most of the correct answers have between three and six steps on these type of problems. If you find yourself doing 12 or 15 steps, you're probably taking a scenic route. There's most likely a much faster way to do it. So I talked about this uh, before, but I can't really ask you to prove an identity on web work. So you're going to find the web work problems. So if this was a web work problem, the version you would see, it'll be something like 2, uh oh. It wasn't a sign. No. <coughs> so if we have two. So this is the web work problem. It will say find f of theta. So that's how the web work problems feel. So the idea is you keep changing the form around until finally you get it down to something that looks just like this right here. And they say, what trig function is f of theta? And the answer is, in our case, negative 2 sine squared theta would be your f function. So that's how a lot of the identities go in web work. Some of them are simplify, uh, which I think you found out kind of ambiguous as to exactly where you stop. You might be one step away from the, what web work thinks is simplified. So I try to minimize those problems. The ones that are similar look like this. But again, on your quiz, I'm going to ask you to prove an identity. So I will tell you what this function f is, and then ask you all the steps to go from start to end. So that's how your quiz is going to be. Uh, because of that, uh, do uh, as many uh, identities in 10.3 in your textbook. So I'm right there on the board again. So 10.3, do some book problems on proving identities. How many should you do? 
There are going to be a few different sections. Do as many as you feel like you need to do so you're ready for your quiz. How ready do you want to be for your quiz? I don't know. Each of you will have a different answer. Some of you want to be super ready. Some of you like to gamble. So however ready you want to be, just do enough problems so you feel that ready while you're doing your actual homework. All right, I'm not going to grade these problems. They also are the, uh, some of the only problems in your book that don't really have answers, technically, because they tell you, hey, these are equal, show why. So there's lots of ways to show why. So they're going to be some of the few problems in your, books, in your book that don't have answers. Uh, on these identities, you should know when you have proved it versus when you haven't. So for example, if I got to the last step and I got 1 minus 3 sine squared of theta, I've not proved it. I didn't get to what uh, I was looking for. So that's definitely not 1 minus 2 for sine squared of theta. So you, you should have a feeling when you prove an identity that, oh, I nailed it. It's a little hard to tell when you make an algebra mistake, but chances are if you made an algebra mistake, you're not going to get down to the identity. And don't force it. Don't say, oh, well, 1 plus 3 sine theta is pretty close to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So there's no close. Believe me, uh, unlike maybe an English or history professor, I will know when you're BSing me. You might get away with skipping a couple steps, but if you don't show me the other two or three steps, I will know that you don't know what you're talking about. Best way to prepare, obviously, web work problems, but really want to do some book problems until you feel confident. You'll probably start out being very frustrated, not being able to prove things are equal. So pick the, the ones that look super easy. Do the easy ones first, then the medium ones, and then move on to ones that have higher powers to trick. And what you are not allowed to bring to your quiz is everything up here. So you need to do enough problems I don't necessarily recommend you sit down and try to memorize these individually. That should have hopefully already been done for a lot of these. But what you want to do is get comfortable using them. There's only really six strategies, so use them enough. And you'll begin on the complicated side. You probably already memorized that. So there's really five strategies uh, that you can use. And most of them are use what's on the, pa the page here or do algebra. The only tricky one is multiply by conjugate over conjugate. In my opinion, that's the only one that is a little bit tricky. You should have already been comfortable factoring. Maybe this factoring is a little bit weird. You're going to do a lot of conjugate factoring. Uh, but overall, there's not really new stuff in the strategy side other than conjugate over conjugate. So that is the end of 10.3. So if you poked around on Canvas, you probably found my formula cheat sheet already. If you didn't, don't worry. I'll point it out to you in 10.4 is where we start using it. So 10.4 is where memorization, uh, the identities we're going to learn in 10.4 are more tricky. So that's where I'm going to give the identities to you. So I think if I remember to do it, I'll, on the back of your quiz, I'll put all the, uh, the cheat sheet on there so you have a copy of it. I'll also open it up on Canvas so you can print out a copy if you have a printer. But I'll be printing a quiz, so I'll just put a copy of the cheat sheet on the back so you can have that. And I will give you a copy of the cheat sheet every quiz, every midterm that you need it on. You won't need it on every quiz in midterm or final, or you will need it on the final, but I will make sure that you have a copy of it whenever you need it. So you won't be responsible for bringing it to class. So we're going to start out in 10.4. And this is, is it more trig identities, they call this section? It doesn't have a very creative name. Let's just call it more trig identities. This one wrong. All right, so 
I don't even have this one memorized. I almost do, and I've been teaching this class for a very long time. So we're going to prove why this is true using some geometry. So this is what we call the difference formula for cosine. Uh, call the difference formula. I'm going to call it the difference equation. So this is hard to remember because there's cosines and sines mixed together, a's and b's. And you're going to see that the other one, when I put a plus here, when it's cos a plus b, this turns into a minus sign. So it is tricky. And this is probably the easiest one of all the ones in this section to remember. So they just get worse from here. So we're going to go ahead and prove this one. So we go and look at a unit circle. We're actually going to draw two unit circles. And you know what? They need to be a little bit bigger. We need to put a pretty good amount of stuff inside of them. So our angles will be A and B right here. So this is a unit circle. So what coordinates will go with the A, the x, y values at A? What are the coordinates that will be at the angle of A right here? What is the x coordinate on the unit circle if you know your angle is A? If, if I knew A was pi over 3, that would be correct. So is x sine A or cos A? So that'll be cos A. And then y is sine A. And then down here we have cos B sine B. So those are the two points right here. Now, if you knew what A and B were, you could figure out cos A and cos, uh, cos B, sine A and sine B. But this should be, I want to keep these angles generic, so I don't even know necessarily what quadrant they're in. So I'm not going to make assumptions like cosine is positive and sine is positive. So they're just points. What I do want to look at is this line right here. And I'm going to call. I'm going to use D for distance right there. So that line, D is a distance. Actually, let's spell it out. We'll call it D-I-S-T for distance. That'll be better. Otherwise, D might look like an angle. So distance is the measurement of that line. So what I'm going to do is rotate this triangle that I just drew. I'm going to rotate it so that uh, this angle B rotates down to 0. So I'm going to bring it back so it's lined up on the x-axis. So it should look about like this right here. And then the side I just drew will be dist. What is the angle? So I want the same angle that I had over here. So I'll draw this angle. What is the angle I just drew right there that measures that inner angle inside that triangle? You have to subtract. So it's what minus what? Should be A minus B. So go up A and then come back B. So over in our triangle on the right side, we have the same triangle. We just rotated it uh, counter. We rotate it clockwise B. So the same angle, A minus B, right there. So any questions on our angle of our triangle right there? All right. Easy question. 
what are the coordinates of this point right here on the x-axis? One zero. All right, slightly less easy question. What are the coordinates of the point at the uh, top here of this triangle? Yep, that's exactly right. Cos A minus B, sine A minus B. We've got our angle A minus B. So we're going to need to use parentheses. So it's cos parentheses A minus B, sine parentheses A minus B. And we know the fact that we're going to be using here is our distance is equal to the other distance. So that comes from similar triangles, the sides are one and the angle is the same. So that means the opposite side there has to be equal as well. So we'll pick this up tomorrow and do a whole bunch of fun algebra.